On December the 14th, 1972, at 5.54 p.m. Mission Control Time, an Apollo lunar module lifted off from the moon's surface for the final time. The two men aboard were Mission Commander Gene Cernan and astronaut Harrison Schmidt, who uh, would soon join Command Module Pilot Ronald Evans in lunar orbit. In the 52 years after Cernan and Schmidt lifted off, the two would live full lives. Schmidt would go on to be a U.S. Senator and a chair on the NASA Advisory Council, while Cernan would become a space educator, an advocate for NASA missions, and a writer. But although they might not have even believed it at the time they departed, Cernan and Schmidt wouldn't just be the last Americans to set foot on the moon, but they would be America's final mission to the lunar surface in the following half a century. All that is until now. At 6.11 p.m. Mission Control Time on February the 22nd, 2024, an American spacecraft would touch down on the moon in the United States' long-awaited return. Given the name Odysseus and carrying hardware from astrophysicists, artists, and educators, Odysseus became the first commercial spacecraft ever to make a successful landing on the lunar surface, kicking off a new era of moon exploration that is only just getting started. The Odysseus lunar land traces its history to December of 2017 and the announcement of Space Policy Directive No. 1. Signed into law by America's Trump administration and made up of a series of key directives, the directive's ultimate goal was the same one that America had set so many years before, to put humankind on the moon. But this time, America's approach was going to be different. Relying on a cooperative effort between the brightest minds of NASA and the grand capitalist ambition of America's private sector, the US would pave a new path to the moon. In order to get there, they were going to need pioneers who were willing to undertake great and ambitious missions of their own. One such pioneer was a company called Intuitive Machines. Founded by NASA alums several years prior to Space Policy Directive No. 1, Intuitive Machines was selected in 2018 alongside several other companies with the goal to design, develop, and construct their own lunar lander. Working with a sum that ballooned to well over $100 million, US dollars, the company's 100-strong team worked for years to develop a class of lunar landers that could not only put their company on the map, but take NASA's coming missions to the next level. What they designed was the Nova 3. Built around a hexagonal cylinder structure, the Nova 3 stands just a hair under 4 meters or 13 feet tall, with a diameter of 2 meters on the cylindrical body, or about 6.5 feet. Standing on a spiderweb of landing gear, the Nova C is a direct descendant of Project Morpheus, a NASA initiative whose research team basically graduated to intuitive machines when Morpheus wrapped up operations. Its exterior is walled with three photovoltaic solar cells to generate power, alongside lithium ion batteries, and space for a payload of up to 100 kilograms or 220 pounds. At the time of launch, the whole apparatus would weigh in at a bit over two tons. The Nova C is powered by a single main engine capable of producing 0.27 horsepower, just enough to guide it gently toward the lunar surface, and it employs cryogenic propellants, meaning that it could become the first lunar lander ever to use that propellant mechanism if successful. It's got autonomous landing systems and the ability to keep a data connection between Earth and not just itself, but its third-party payloads. In a particularly neat touch, the lander is able to scope out the lunar surface underneath, assess it, and if needed, take off again, cruise, and relocate to a second choice landing spot if the first choice option looks a bit sketchy. It was the first of three planned Nova Sea landers that would become the keystone element of the Odysseus mission. Planned to launch from Kennedy Space Center in Florida on the back of a Falcon 9 Block 5 rocket courtesy of SpaceX, Odysseus was named for the legendary Greek king of Ithaca, hero of Homer's epic poem The Odyssey. On board, it was assigned to carry a total of six NASA instruments as a part of its voyage. A LiDAR navigation system, a camera, a radio receiver, a laser retro reflector array, a device to monitor the lander's use of its propellant, and a device called Lunar Node 1, one of several navigational nodes that NASA intends to use to mark the moon's surface, to support future lunar surface and orbital operations, and hopefully make them more autonomous. But NASA weren't the only ones loading up items for a piggyback ride on Odysseus. The lander came equipped with the so-called Eagle Cam, a miniaturized cubic satellite, or CubeSat, that was built by staff and students at Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University. If all went well, it would be ejected from Odysseus about 30 meters above the lunar surface in order to take video while the lander touched down. Odysseus also carried a sculpture installation by American artist Jeff Koons, a lunar blanket made by Columbia Sportswear, and a chip carrying the artistic works of Picasso, Michelangelo, and nearly 200 other artists. Odysseus was given its payload in the early days of 2024. It was loaded onto a Falcon 9 rocket that would see it on its way to the stars, and it was tested, checked, and cleared for operation before the day finally arrived. February 15th. 
2024. For Odysseus, liftoff was a seamless operation. SpaceX's Falcon 9 worked precisely as expected, placing Odysseus into a direct lunar trajectory that would see it intersect with the moon post haste. Under an hour after liftoff, the Falcon 9's second stage rocket released Odysseus. The lander powered up and it confirmed to Mission Control that it was oriented right, able to generate power, and able to maintain a constant radio connection with the Earth. As it said farewell to its second stage booster, Odysseus took a group selfie on behalf of the occupants of planet Earth, beaming back its first images shortly after. The subsequent journey took roughly a week to complete, at which time Odysseus gently transitioned into lunar orbit. It spent a day circling Earth's next door neighbor, taking and beaming back pictures as flight controllers finalized plans for landing. The team at Intuitive Machines made no illusion about just how risky the maneuver would ultimately be, all too aware their landing could go the same way as a landing by a private company, Astrobiotic, just a few weeks prior, whose failed lunar landing we've covered separately on this channel. But anxious or not, Intuitive Machines moment of truth was set. The late afternoon, mission control time, February 22nd. For Odysseus, landing was an ordeal. Prior to the final descent to the lunar surface, mission control ascertained that somebody had failed to turn on a safety switch for the lander's primary laser rangefinder, an issue that caused ground teams to have to do some last-minute reprogramming work aboard the lander to compensate. Then complications with the internal navigation system were enough to prevent the use of the Eagle Cam to capture Odysseus's landing as anticipated, instead powering the device down and saving its deployment until later in the mission. But when the time came for lunar touchdown, Odysseus proved capable. When it dropped to the surface, as scheduled, it set down on the moon in a soft landing with all payloads and instruments able to function. Odysseus had landed. Odysseus and Intuitive Machines had done it. They'd brought America back to the lunar surface for the first time in generations. They'd become the first private company ever to perform a soft landing on the moon, and they'd become the first, and thus far the only, of NASA's private partners to prove that they could hold up their end of a lunar landing. It was a crowning achievement for intuitive machines, a clear vindication of NASA's private partnership approach to space travel, and a historic day for America's legacy in space. And then, well, the lander fell over. Odysseus was, luckily, able to establish contact with Mission Control shortly after landing, although the faintness of those communications led to early suspicions that the status of the lander might be in doubt. Unfortunately, later analysis confirmed that the lander had tipped and fallen onto its side during landing, after it had come in a little too hot toward the lunar surface and gotten tripped up on one of its six legs. Fortunately for Odysseus, that's somewhat less problematic in a low-gravity environment, and although we've got to imagine it's in sort of a beached whale situation at present, its system systems all remained operational throughout and after its tumble, meaning that for all intents and purposes, the lander was a complete success, albeit a slightly more horizontal one than was originally intended. The only casualty of the landing was Jeff Koons' sculpture, which is now facing toward the ground and will have to be harvested and rebuilt before it's entered into any future Moon Colony art museum. But even though Odysseus was able to get through the trials and tribulations of its touchdown, the real mission had only just begun, and that mission would not last long. Like other recent lunar landers, Odysseus is not designed to survive through the harsh, incredibly cold lunar night, a long ordeal that would begin about one Earth week after landing. But now the lander's sideways orientation would mean that its solar panels would stop collecting power even earlier than intended on the morning of Tuesday, February the 27th, mission control time. By the time this episode is released, Odysseus will likely be on its final bit of charge, if indeed it's able to survive that long at all, before it's lost for good in the cold lunar night. In the intervening time, Odysseus was able to capture an image of its Itself, albeit not from the Eagle Cam CubeSat, as its use would eventually be called off completely. It was able to transmit data it found about nine safe landing sites close to the lunar south pole, a critical area for future astronauts because of the presence of frozen water. To that end, Odysseus was also able to confirm its own position and become the lander to make the closest landing ever to the moon's south pole. Unlike other spacecrafts that Mission Control knows is operating on limited time, Odysseus is not engaged in a mad dash toward the finish line. By and large, its work is already done and now it's just waiting on the sunset. For what it's worth, the coming of the lunar night may not be the final death now for Odysseus. Recently, another moon lander suffered a similar problem, this time Japan's Slim, or Smart Lander for Investigating Moon. Like Odysseus, Slim was not prepared with the insulation or internal heat sources it would need to survive the lunar night and was expected to experience its demise during the first lunar night it experienced a few weeks prior to Odysseus's arrival. But much to the surprise of Slim's handlers in Japan, their lander managed to make it through lunar night, awake back up and making contact 
contact with the Earth when the sun rose and charged its batteries again. If Odysseus does the same, it won't make much of a difference from the perspective of its intended mission, but it'll be a very welcome surprise to see Odyssey phoning home again in a few weeks' time. And after the end of the Odysseus mission, more Nova Sea series landers will be coming to the moon to join it. The next will launch from Earth in late 2024, carrying an ice drill that'll carry cores from beneath the lunar surface and a separate hopping rover that'll travel into hard-to-reach corners of lunar craters. A third craft will launch in 2025, investigating a geographical feature of the moon called the Rhina Gamma, where unexplained magnetism has perplexed scientists for years. Finally, two successor craft, the Nova D and the Nova M, will follow in Odysseus's footsteps in their own time, alongside over a hundred other public and private moon missions from all across the world. The work of the Odysseus lander may be done, but the work of the 21st century's lunar explorers is only just beginning. For all the landers to come, it'll be Odysseus that is the gold standard of successful lunar touchdown. And it's Odysseus that'll offer a powerful lesson learned about perhaps not stumbling on the way there. When the next set of landing gear touches down, and the next after that, they'll draw a through line from Odysseus to the ultimate objective Odysseus was made for, the first boots to touch on lunar soil in the better part of a century.